Hello there, and welcome to experiment four, the nucleophilic substitution reaction chemistry. Here's our basic glass we're set up. We have our 250 milliliter flask. It's the one with the little side up. That's so we can use the funnel to put the stuff in. And it is clamped securely. We have a Claisen head here, a water-cooled condenser, a separatory dropping style funnel with a stopper, and at the top here, we have a, a hose adapter. That hose is Tygon tubing. And it's all black and horrible because it's been exposed to acid vapor for years. Comes down here into this, what looks like a suction flask. But there's a, a tube here and a rubber stopper. And this is a safety trap because coming out of here through this piece of Tygon tubing, we're going into sodium hydroxide. The, contents of this flask will be acid. This is sodium hydroxide. This is to trap the acid vapors so we don't all start coughing in the laboratory. Now, this has to be empty. Don't let the lab manual fool you. It might look like there's something in there, but this is empty. Please, it's the trap. It will save your life. So, what do we have to do? We have to put hydrochloric acid concentrated, bromic acid concentrated, and butanol in here. I just happen to have them right here in this beaker. In they go. Now the first part of our reaction does not require heating. So what we will do after we get this out of here and put the little stopper in. As you notice, the distance here is such that I can get the heating mantle in and out. So up we go, take our stir plate, bring it up here, plug it in, start stirring. Now, up there goes the sulfuric acid. You have to be really careful with these guys and really careful with sulfuric acid. That stuff will really burn you. So make sure your stopcock is reasonably snug so we don't leak. And that is just placed in this position. And we add the sulfuric acid. With the top closed, please. And you can already see a little vapors already. We'll pop that right back under here. Put the cap back on. Now, the important thing here, these are soaked with acid. Good time to go clean them up. Straight to the sink, lots of water. So, now, we're stirring, and we have sulfuric acid. We have cooling water running. We have our safety trap hooked up. Any acid vapors that might be generated are going to be neutralized here by the sodium hydroxide. And our little elephant trunk Canada arm th thing here is on. So any vapors that may be escaping are going to escape down here. So we'll keep that down close to this. And away we go. Slow addition. Drop a second, maybe. Can be a little finicky to get the right speed. You'll know you're going too fast if you got a lot of bubbling action going on over here because you're boiling too hard. The heating part comes later. But just mixing is going to create heat. Sulfuric acid does that. Normally, one would do the reverse addition. One would add things like water in, in a different fashion. However, in this case, in order for the chemistry to go properly, we have the chloride and bromide in place with the alcohol, and we want to substitu substitute the alcohol group with either chloride or a bromide. Unfortunately, 
Hydroxide is a really lousy leaving group, but water is a better one, so we can protonate the alcohol by using the really, really strong sulfuric acid. That is essentially catalyzing the reaction, if you will, and allowing chloride and bromide to displace the hydroxide, <coughs> the alcohol, and so we will get our products of chlorobutane and bromobutane. I don't have too much heat here yet. Stirring is still good. I don't see any vapors happening. And there's no leakage in the system. Cooling water is still flowing. Now would be a good time to write in your lab book or read ahead. When this reaction is finished, you have to separate the organic product from the aqueous layer. Well, the acids are the aqueous layer, and hydrobromic acid and hydrochloric acids tend to be more dense than water, and we're making an organic product. The densities, if they're not in here, you were supposed to look them up. So, essentially what's gonna happen is we're gonna see the product forming as a layer in our reaction flask as the reaction proceeds. That's what you want to keep. Just like two weeks ago, we'll be using the SEP funnel, only this time instead of sort of extractions, we're going to be washing our product, get all that residual acid out of the product by washing with water, bicarbonate, and then finishing with more water, and then the usual dry over anhydrous sodium sulfate, and then we're done we have our product isolated that easily. Now, it's not very pure, so guess what? Next week, we'll do a distillation. Hopefully, we'll be able to monitor the success and failure of our reaction by gas chromatography. So, the reaction continues. Not too hot. But I can actually see we're already forming a layer on the top here. Stir that a little faster. The butanol is soluble. Alcohols tend to be soluble in aqueous environments, and butanol is indeed soluble. But the products, chloro and bromobutane, are not soluble in water at all. Okay, our addition is now finished. I have removed the separatory funnel and placed the stopper here at the stop and cleaned it up and put it away. So now we have to carefully lower our stir plate, put the heating mantle in place, gently raise it up until it's just barely touching. Plugging the heating mantle into the power supply. And the power supply is plugged into the wall. Setting our temperature 120 volts, approximately 60% if your variac goes from 0 to 100. And now we sit back and wait and heat a little more. Okay, now the heating phase is done and I have removed the heating mantle and let this cool off a little bit. It was really hot. Now, we don't want to be working with hot acid, so guess what? We use an ice water bath. After it's cooled for about five minutes, we bring the ice water bath in place. Just a little bit of stirring, and this will quickly cool down. Just as they proved on Mythbusters, the fastest way to cool a beverage is ice water plus a little jostling. 
we do the same thing in the chemistry lab and have been doing that for years. So while that's cooling, what I've got is I've got my 250 millisept funnel organized. I've got the powder funnel for pouring the stuff into the uh, set funnel. And of course, you always have a catch beaker underneath your set funnel. So I've got my stuff prepared. In the meantime, while this is cooling, you'll notice that the sodium hydroxide is starting to suck up the hose. Essentially, the cooling, of course, is reducing the pressure. We're creating a little vacuum, and we don't really want the sodium hydroxide to go up. This is why we have the trap. If we didn't have the trap, the sodium hydroxide would go up and mix with the acid. Acid plus base equals water plus a lot of heat. This would be really, really bad. So what we should actually do is probably just move that over a bit so the sodium hydroxide doesn't get sucked up there anymore. And uh, it's cooling, so we don't have to worry about the acid vapors. So in a moment, we'll be ready to transfer to the separatory funnel. Okay, now here we are. Everything is hopefully nice and cool. Lower down our ice water bath, set that out of the way. I don't know if you can actually see this, but there is indeed a layer on top, and that's our product. So carefully, the cold solution into the separatory funnel. We have our uh, spilly beaker underneath, just in case something goes wrong. But that should be good. And you'll notice that once it got cool, I was able to disassemble the glassware, remove the water hoses, rinse everything thoroughly with water, and put it away. This guy, very expensive, so let's put him somewhere safe. So, here I have my concentrated acid mixtures, aqueous, with the organic layer on top. So, quickly drain that off. And I think you'll see as we get down, you can see the layer becomes more clear as you get to the bottom. We don't have to get rid of all the water, but we try to get as much as we can. We're going to do a series of washes so we don't have to get too carried away with it. Now, what you've just done is drained off a concentrated acid mixture. There is a special waste container for that, and you need to put it in that strong concentrated acid waste container immediately, please. Okay, go over there. So, there's our organic layer, and it says wash with water. Well, okay, just like two weeks ago, add water. Oh, what happened? water was clear and colorless. The aqueous phase was on the bottom before, but it's not now. But that's because they were acids. The concentrated acids are extremely dense. You would be too if you had a lot of chlorine and bromine hanging around, or chloride and bromide, excuse me. So now the layers have switched. Very important that you pay attention. Where's the product? It was on top, now it's on the bottom. We're doing a wash. We don't have to go crazy, crazy with our set funnel. But again, always release pressure with a set funnel. I like to do the slosh technique. You don't need to do. Uh, don't need to shake the baby. You don't need to be too crazy about it. Just enough to get a good mix. If you shake it too much, you get an emulsion, and then you gotta wait for it to settle. So I've actually potentially overshaken that, and it's a little funny, so I'm gonna have to wait a minute for that to settle. Okay, it seemed to settle down nicely, so here we go. And draining off the bottom chlorobromobutane mixture and again 
Don't have to get it all. I'm we'll trying to get most of it. A little stinky, so I'll put this over here. Okay, now. Need another waste beaker. That was my water wash. Now I've got to do a couple of sodium bicarb washes. This will help soak up any residual acid that may or may not be there. And using our powder funnel, back in goes the product, catch beaker underneath, in goes the bicarbonate. And this time, instead of shaking, I'm just going to give it a little swirl. Sometimes your layers don't want to behave themselves. Usually what you have to do is add a little bit of brine, a little bit of salt water to break it up. Just change the density, change the polarity a bit, and things, are us things usually work out quite nicely. So once again, this can be done fairly quickly. Just off comes the organic layer off the bottom. Not too concerned if I get some of the bicarbonate through. Aqueous into my aqueous waste beaker. Off we go. Another wash. I think you get the idea. Another bicarb wash, some more water washes, and then we'll be into uh, drying our final product. Okay, so I've completed all my washes, and I have an Erlenmeyer. Erlenmeyers are good, they're conical, they've got a small opening. Vapors tend to get contained within them, They're not as stinky, so it keeps things under control a little bit better. So really, you should be using an Erlenmeyer. Beakers, I don't know what they're really good for. Um, convenience, but when you want to keep odors and thing, odors and fumes down, use an Erlenmeyer. So off we go. Uh, drain off our final, our final separation here of our product from our wash layers and there it is nice all we have to do now is a quick dry over sodium sulfate and then we will decant the liquid into a pre-weighed vial so we can store it for the week a teaspoon give it a swirl and you see it all sticks, sticks and lumps up on the flasks. That's good. The lumpy stuff is the stuff that's soaked up water. There should be still be some residual, residual loose material. As long as you've got some free flowing sodium sulfate, you know you've added enough. It takes a few minutes, ideally. After you let that sit for three, four, five minutes, you will get a nice, clear solution. And we will keep that until next week and distill it. Now, please, do not rely on this video for all your preparation for the laboratory. Please read the lab manual and try to put together all of these equipment issues, chemistry issues, and technical issues. That way, we can have, form, we can have more fun in the lab. See you there. Bye.